Hello my stitching friends. Welcome back to another video. My name is Christine and I am here with you at the very end of December 2023. Uh, I, I paused there for a minute because I was uh, trying to think when you're going to see this video. I think I'm going to upload this video on New Year's Eve, but I am currently filming it on the 22nd of December. And this video is going to be a follow-up to the Dimensions Kit Parade that I uploaded last month in, in November. If you have not seen that, I'm going to link that down below. And uh, I had a lot of requests to see my Dimensions finishes. And um, while doing that, I'm going to also show my Dimensions whips. So this is just, like I said, going to be a part two to the Kit Parade so that you can see the full spectrum of my Dimensions collection. So you saw the kits. And yes, I, I, I know that you see some kits right here. <laughs> this is not another kit parade, but because it is part two to the other video, I have made, as you can see, four more purchases since that video. So for my own sort of journaling, I guess you could say, uh, I wanted to show the kits that I bought so that at the end of December, at the end of the year of 2023, I can see actually which kits I own up to that point. That way, if I ever do a part two to that, which I won't because I'm not going to buy any more Dimensions kits, right? <laughs> we all know that's not true. But as of right now, I wanted to have a end of the year sort of collection of where my Dimensions are. So I'm going to include these four that I bought now if you want. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the purchases that I made since my last kit review. I'm going to move my coffee. I'm going to take a drink and then move my coffee off to the side. All right. So in my kit parade, I had mentioned that this was one that I hadn't owned yet and I was on the lookout for. It's it's still easily accessible. It just was, um, I think, because it is out of print. Uh, I believe it's out of print. I'm not 100% sure. It might be still in print overseas somewhere, but it... Uh, I was waiting for it to come down in price, but I was worried it was just going to keep going up in price. So I did go ahead and purchase this. Paid a little more than I wanted to for it, but um, I, like I said, I'm worried it's just going to get more expensive. As you know, some of these older Dimensions kits can get more expensive as time goes on. And sometimes they reprint them and then you get a better deal. But this is Summer Cottage. Is that what it's called? Yes. So, whoop, sorry. So just adding to my collection of cottages and cabins. <laughs> this is one that I'm happy to have. Okay, so after I got that, then um, I was looking on, I don't think it was eBay, I think it was Mercari, and I came across this one, which is called Moonlit Cabin, and it looks very similar to, I think... Oh, uh, I can't remember what the name of the other Dimensions kit is that looks similar, but this one is one I had forgotten about, and when I saw it, it almost looks like a mini version of Aurora Cabin. And I just love it, and had to have it, and it was a fairly reasonable price. So, you know, I, I think this is out of print. This one's fairly old. Well, 2011, so yeah, it's probably out of print by now. I love that, and that is what it looks like on the back side. And then I bought this one because it's one that I have had my eye on for a while, and um, you know how you just, sometimes you just think about it for a bit, like I said many times in my other video, and then I looked at it this time and said, yeah, I don't know why I don't have that one, so I bought it. Because it has everything in it that I love. Snowman, birds, and then that's what the back side of that looks like. I think this is still accessible. I don't believe it's out of print. Uh, this one, what is the date on it? It's by Donna Race. And yeah, I mean, my kit was, uh, this was packaged in 2022. So I think this one is still easily accessible. I mean, um, readily accessible. So very cute. And the name of that is Snowman and Reindeer. And then last but not least, one that I have had my eye on for a while. And this was an early Christmas present uh, to myself. <laughs> and this is it, Holy Nativity. Uh, at the time that I purchased this last week, there were about five or six of them on eBay. And they're all a bit pricey. Uh, I think I got the best deal out of all of them at the time. Still a little more than I wanted to pay for a 5x7 Dimensions kit. But... Once again, this looks absolutely beautiful, stitched up, and I'm afraid it's just going to keep getting more and more expensive, so I just uh, 
broke down and decided to treat myself for one last Dimensions kit of the year, 2023. I'm not going to buy any more. If I do, it's not going to be till next year. So this is my final purchase, and I'm so excited. I think that I will be starting this, uh, if not very soon, I'll start it maybe on New Year's Eve. So, Holy Nativity, and yes, like I said, out of print, but it might, I think... There's a chance that this one might be uh, coming into print again soon because I found a picture online where it had this this kit in the newer white packaging. So although it's not available, I don't think that way in the United States, it might be available overseas that way. So potentially maybe this will be a reprint maybe uh, in the near future. So if you're looking for that one, be watching out for that. Okay, let me put these aside and we will start with uh, my finishes, and then we will go into the whips. Okay, this very first one I'm going to show you is a stamped cross stitch. We're going to start with FFOs. Uh, FFOs stand for Fully Finished Objects, if you are new to that acronym, and it is what we call our finishes that have been sort of in their final state, framed or however finished. So this one here is an FFO and I think the name of it is Enough Coffee, I think is the name of it. It is a dimensions kit, a stamped dimensions kit, and it does have some embroidery stitches on it as you can see there. So I thought this was adorable. This is, I thought I hadn't done a stamped kit before but I forgot about this one. Um, it's, it has also some uh, printed fabric on the back, as you can see, some like little coffee beans there. So this is adorable, and it is in its frame, all ready to display. And I forgot about it because it was put away, so I need to kind of set that out. And uh, yeah, so I can see it every day. So very cute, stamped, and I'm going to do my best to tell you where these finishes, what the names of these finishes are, uh, and maybe when I do the editing, post-processing, I may very well... If I can't remember the name of something, I'll put it across the screen so you can see it for, for your own reference. But that is FFO finish number one. All right, FFO number two is, and this one's probably gonna have some glare because it is framed in glass. This is called Glory of Autumn, I believe. Autumn Glory or Glory of Autumn? I think it's Glory of Autumn. Still widely available, very, very popular dimensions kit and I did put this in a frame which was only going to be a temporary frame because I was a little unhappy with the fact that some of the stitching is getting cut off on the edges because it doesn't quite fit in this frame but and I I put the date on this one which I don't always put the date on my kits but it's kind of nice to see that I finished this in 2016 and because it's been in a frame probably since then uh, I'm guessing I'm going to just call this its permanent living space because uh, if I haven't switched it out by now, I probably won't because I set this out every year and enjoy it. So it's absolutely beautiful. I love stitching this. I think I, if I remember correctly, I think that I swapped out the fabric in this kit, which I hardly ever do, but I believe that I swapped it out for a 20, I mean, sorry, a 16 count Fiddler's Ada in light oatmeal. And I had to make a few of the adjustments because I think some of the threads that called for, you know, more than four strands, I think it looked a little bulky. So I think I did make some adjustments in the number of strands I used for this. But it is so beautiful and still one of my absolute favorite finishes by Dimensions. And I believe it was a Dimensions Gold, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so there we go. Glory of Autumn. Oh. This next one here is a finish that I did a while ago, and a fully a fully finish that I did, and it's one of those dimensions, I think it's like a learn to craft kit or something. It's one of the real little small ones that you get. And I just finished it in a little quilted wall hanging. Um, probably if I could do it different, I maybe change, would change out the fabric. I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's cute, but I don't know. It kind of has, even though I think I finished it probably in the early 2000s it kind of has a feel of like 80s or 90s because of the the fabric that I used but it's cute nonetheless it's got the little rings here up here to put a dowel through so that I can hang it and yeah I don't know when I finished it but one of those just real easy like I said the learn learn to craft dimensions kits very cute uh, I think 
there's a very similar one I think that they make now. I think this particular one is out of print. Uh, I think they make one now that has two hummingbirds on it, but the one with one, I think this one, and I don't remember the name, I'll put it across the screen. I think it's just hummingbird and fuchsia or something like that. But there's, I think Dimensions makes several iterations of this sort of hummingbird with fuchsia designs. And this was just one of them. So, okay, there we go. This FFO I showed you in my uh, kit parade that I just did in November. Uh, this is one of the four banners. And this was the fall one. I have the other three in my collection. But this is the only one that I have fully finished, and I love it. The backing on that looks like I supplied my own fabric for that because I do recognize that as being in my stash. So that is... Uh, Another FFO. I don't have too many FFOs. I think only two more. Then we're going to go on with just the, the ones that aren't fully finished. Okay. And this is my most recent FFO. This is the one uh, I just finished. In, I mostly worked on it in October. Finished it, I think, in November. Uh, and why am I already forgetting the name of this one? Moon and Cat, Moon Cat, I don't, I think, whatever, <laughs> I don't remember what it is, widely available. It's one of the only ones, uh, one of the newest Dimensions kits that I bought. I don't think I have, I'm, most of the ones I have are, are older Dimensions kits. Um, anything, this is the only one I have that, that actually comes in their new packaging, the white packaging. Love it. Um, once again, this is a frame that I was thinking was going to just be its temporary frame, but I don't know. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it in this frame because uh, same issue. It's kind of got cut off on the side a little bit, but it, it looks good in this frame. And I have quite a few frames that are uh, this distressed white wood and a lot of the Dimensions kits look uh, really nice in it. So I could easily swap this out and display some other things, but there we go. And then the final FFO that I have, and my absolute favorite, is this one right here. And it is a Dimensions Gold Petite, and it is called Santa's Feathered Friend. And this is absolutely my number one most favorite Dimensions kit that I have, and a finish. And I finished it in a flat fold that opens up like this. Thank you to Vonna Pfeiffer for her tutorial on this. There's a little bit of rickrack. Um, I'm so excited about this finish. You think that I would do more of them, but I didn't. I only did this one, but I love it so much how it just stands up. Uh, this bow is not a bow that I uh, folded myself. I think it was a hair ribbon that I found at Walmart, and I took the barrette part of it off and just glued it on. So um, I can fully finish things. I just don't like to. But I do love the flat fold, and it's it's probably my favorite way to have a finish. It's just, I just don't, I know, I just don't, I'd rather stitch than finish. But love this so much. Try to zoom in there. I don't know how well my front camera focuses, so I'm, I can't really do probably a close-up without it getting out of focus. But Santa's Feathered Friend, Gold Petite. Uh, I do think this is out of print. But if you keep an eye on eBay and, and the secondary markets, you can come across this. Love the little pom-pom trim. So cute. Okay, we're going to go now into the projects I have that aren't fully finished. They're fully stitched, but have not been framed or anything else done to them. This one is an interesting one because it is a stamped cross-stitch. One of the only stamped cross-stitches. Well, okay, it's... Let me rephrase that. It is sold as a stamped cross stitch, but I, and it looks like I put the date down here just so I would remember when I did it. I used to be better at that. Uh, it is sold as a stamped cross stitch, but I decided to do it as a counted cross stitch. So I took the pattern and put it on my own fabric and then just followed the pattern as a counted cross stitch. And it was, I was able to do that with this one because there was nothing special about the fabric. A lot of times the stamped ones come with a printed fabric and you can't always do this, but because this one didn't have any kind of a specialty fabric with it, it was, uh, I was able to kind of translate it over to a counted cross stitch. And if you remember, 
Um, I do have a kit called, so this one's called Chickadees on a Branch. And like I said, it is a stamped cross stitch, but there is one called, I think, Chickadee and Pine Cones, even though I do think that that kit is sold under other names as well, but it looks almost identical to this, and it is the counted cross stitch pattern. And I it almost, like I said, almost looks identical to this. And I have that in my collection and would like to stitch it as well. But very happy with the way this one turned out. It was uh, a little difficult doing the satin stitch on the Ada cloth because I think that's easier to do on, or this isn't Ada, it's an even weave. Uh, I think that's easier to do on a fabric that's uh, not necessarily an even weave like this. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just had problems with it because I just don't do, I just don't do satin stitch well. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Now, uh, this one technically could have fallen into the FFOs because it does fit into the frame. Uh, if you look, it looks like it has been in a frame because it has. And actually, let me grab that frame real quick and show you. Okay, I just popped out my moon kitty out of this frame and can show you how this one just pops right into the frame there. And so we can kind of technically call this a, an FFO as well. Uh, this is an old dimension kit. I cannot remember what it is called, um, but I found it in 2020 and I just thought that it was the perfect thing to stitch in 2020 because uh, I know in the United States anyway, there was that trend where everybody was putting teddy bears in their window. Uh, during the pandemic so that kids can drive by and kind of, you know, have something to look at. And so I did have a little Winnie the Pooh actually sitting in my window during the pandemic. And when I saw this cross stitch, I just couldn't believe. I'm like, that is that I need to stitch that. And so I think it said something at the bottom, like welcome or something. And I decided to put in it, let's stay home 2020. So this is my quarantine pandemic piece. So adorable. I just love this one so much. So yes, it, it, that should fall into the FFO category. Okay, moving on. This one here is one of the Dimensions ornaments that are the little full coverage ornaments. And I uh, believe there might be four or five of them. I have, I think, one other one in my collection, and this is the only one that I've stitched. And I do remember it being... Uh, sort of tedious to stitch because it is full coverage and uh, I don't usually like to show the backs but <laughs> this thing is like a rug it's really thick and I think it's because it took a lot of strands and a lot of strands for the coverage and just was just you know so hard to get the fabric through you know kind of tedious but it turns out lovely and this would just be so quick and easy to turn into a little uh, ornament you know mounted to some uh, mat board or even turned into a little pillow. So, yep, one of the series. Okay, this one here is an old one that uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's a very old vintage, just regular dimensions, and uh, I think I just stitched it because it just has kind of that feel of I don't really remember why I was attracted to this. I just at the time was feeling just, it just had a, such a nostalgic, you know, reminds me of my childhood. And it has just an adorable little kind of vintage feel to it, retro feel from the 80s. I think this was probably made in the 80s for sure. And it looks like it has little beads here. These were probably supposed to be French knots, but I think I substituted beads for that instead. If I don't by any chance put the names for these kits or you're interested in them, you know, leave me a comment. I'll be, or even uh, message me on Instagram. I'll be happy to find the names of these because I do have them. I just need to go digging for them. Okay. Then we've got next, this one I think is called Dragonfly Duo. Also a Dimensions Petite, but I don't think it's a gold petite. And I don't know if this one's in print anymore either. Uh, but... Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think I see it around as much anymore, but it does, um, I think you can still find this one. I swapped out the fabric in this. So another one, like I said, I don't usually swap out the fabric, but for some reason I did on this one, and I think I just thought it would look nicer on blue. I think that's the only reason why I did it. So don't know what this looks, probably just like a, maybe a 16 or 18 count blue fabric there. 
and it's got some nice big fluffy French knots on it for the flowers. Very cute. And I think I had intended to finish that one and give it to my mother-in-law who loves dragonflies, but I, I haven't done that yet. I need to get on that. Okay, this one is a, so this one is kind of um, an unusual shape, so I don't think it's probably not a Dimensions Petite, because those are usually five by seven, but this one is uh, just one of one of my absolute, absolute favorites, because robins, American robins, are one of my favorite birds, probably my most favorite bird, it, and I mean, I love all birds, so it's hard to pick a favorite, but I think robins, the American robin, is my favorite, and I had to stitch this, and I think this one's out of print. I don't ever see this anywhere, and I even stitched the sentiment on it that says, the rebirth of nature awakens all of the senses. So I just, I'm, it's, I'm drawing a blank as to what the name of this one is. But it's interesting because it's square, so I don't think most of the dimensions, uh, small dimensions kits are square, so it's kind of odd. And I think... I do believe that this one kind of has, I haven't framed it yet because it had, um, it has like a little bit of a warp to it that can sometimes happen. I think if you, when a kid has a lot of half cross stitches, there's the certain way that you have to do it to keep it from warping, which I have now been more cognizant of doing that. So my most recent ones are quite, aren't usually warped like this, but early on, I think I was kind of heavy handed with my stitching and then, um, yeah, so you got to be careful of that. I think you'll see there's another kit that I had a, a warping issue with. But anyway, here we go. There's that finish. I hope I'm keeping these up long enough for you to enjoy them. This is one that I also had in that same frame. I think that I just, uh, you can see that it was, um, let me grab it. I think we'll just put it over this just for the sake of, just so I can kind of show you how cute that one looks in its little frame. See, it also fits very nicely in that frame. But I think this is one that one of those that's called matted accents, and it actually came with its own mat that you can then put it in an eight by 10. And, but I think that I had just had it in this frame because it also looks nice in this frame and it was quick. So, but yes, eventually I'd like to use the mat that came with it and have the, you know, use it as it was intended to be framed as a matted accent. All right, now we are getting on to ones that I know for sure are the Dimensions Gold Petites. This one right here is called Snowman and Friends. And I know that I stitched this quite a while ago, quite a few years ago. Uh, I don't really remember when, but it's one that I really enjoyed. And the fun thing about this, if you look, is he's got these little, uh, can you see the little scarf ends here where these little, uh, what do you call them? Just little knots that you tie so that you can have the fringe, the fringe on his scarf, which is just adorable. Hopefully that's staying in focus. This is cute. I just love the little kids in the background there in the window. And the little animals and birds. The bird seed. It looks like they're eating some corn or something. Oh yeah. So yeah, there's some dried corn down there by its feet and they're eating the seeds. So cute. Snowman and friends. I think there's a version of this that comes in a stocking as well, if I'm not mistaken. Alright. Then there was this one that I didn't even know existed until. I saw it on Luda's channel, and when she stitched it, I went on the lookout for it. Okay, then we've got next, this one I think is called Dragonfly Duo, also a Dimensions Petite, but I don't think it's a gold petite, and I don't know if this one's in print anymore either, uh, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think I see it around as much anymore, but it does, um, I think you can still find this one. I swapped out the fabric in this. So another one, like I said, I don't usually swap out the fabric, but for some reason I did on this one, and I think I just thought it would look nicer on blue. I think that's the only reason why I did it. So don't know what, this looks probably just like a, maybe a 16 or 18 count blue fabric there. 
and it's got some nice big fluffy French knots on it for the flowers. Very cute. And I think I had intended to finish that one and give it to my mother-in-law who loves dragonflies, but <laughs> I haven't done that yet. I need to get on that. Okay, this one is a, so this one is kind of um, an unusual shape. So I don't think it's probably not a dimensions petite because those are usually five by seven, but this one is uh just one of one of my absolute absolute favorites because robins american robins are one of my favorite birds probably my most favorite bird it, and i mean i love all birds so it's hard to pick a favorite but i think robins the american robin is my favorite and i had to stitch this and i think this one's out of print i don't ever see this anywhere and i even stitched the sentiment on it that says the rebirth of nature awakens all of the senses so just I'm, it's, I'm drawing a blank as to what the name of this one is but it's interesting because it's square so i don't think most of the dimensions uh small dimensions kits are square so it's kind of odd and i i do believe that this one kind of has i haven't framed it yet because it had um it has like a little bit of a warp to it that can sometimes happen I think if you, when a kid has a lot of half cross stitches, there's the certain way that you have to do it to keep it from warping, which I have now been more cognizant of doing that. So my most recent ones are quite, aren't usually warped like this, but early on, I think I was kind of heavy handed with my stitching and then, um, yeah, so you got to be careful of that. I think you'll see there's another kit that I had a, a warping issue with, but anyway, here we go. There's that finish. I hope I'm keeping these up long enough for you to enjoy them. This is one that I also had in that same frame. I think that I just, uh, you can see that it was, um, let me grab it. I think we'll just put it over this just for the sake of, just so I can kind of show you how cute that one looks in its little frame. See, it also fits very nicely in that frame. But I think this is one that one of those that's called matted accents and it actually came with its own mat that you can then put it in an eight by 10. And, but I think that I had just had it in this frame because it also looks nice in this frame and it was quick. So, but yes, eventually I'd like to use the mat that came with it and have the, you know, use it as it was intended to be framed as a matted accent. All right, now we are getting on to ones that I know for sure are the Dimensions Gold Petites. This one right here is called Snowman and Friends. And I know that I stitched this quite a while ago, quite a few years ago. Uh, I don't really remember when, but it's one that I really enjoyed. And the fun thing about this, if you look, is he's got these little, uh, can you see the little scarf ends here where these little, uh, what do you call them? Just little knots that you tie so that you can have the fringe, the fringe on his scarf, which is just adorable. Hopefully that's staying in focus. This is cute. I just love the little kids in the background there in the window and the little animals and birds. The bird seed, it looks like they're eating some corn or something. Oh yeah, so yeah, there's some dried corn down there by its feet and they're eating the seeds. So cute. Snowman and Friends. I think there's a version of this that comes in a stocking as well, if I'm not mistaken. All right, then there was this one that I didn't even know existed until I saw it on Luda's channel. And when she stitched it, I went on the lookout for it. Absolutely love the lighting in this one. Love this one. It's out of print and I think it's quite hard to find, but when I got it, I just I immediately had to go stitch it because I love hummingbirds. And this is just, I just love how they did the shadowing and the lighting on the house. Uh, I will put the name because it's, I'm drawing a complete blank as to what this one's called. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that one. It's one of those that the cover picture didn't do it justice and I was never really kind of drawn to it until I saw it stitched as probably you're thinking now as you're looking at this because it is stunning when it's stitched. Okay. 
Okay, then we've got this one here. Uh, this one I think is called Winter Hideaway, I believe. And I stitched this, if not last Christmas, maybe, or last December, but maybe the December before. But I know that when I did it, I stitched it in one month. So this maybe wasn't a gold petite. This might just be a, a regular dimensions. Maybe it's a gold. I, I was surprised how quick it went though. But maybe if I just always focused on one project, I would get more done. It has this border on it because to put it in the hoop, I a lot of times will sew fabric on the outside edge. And that allows me to put the whole thing in a hoop. Um, and then I think I just didn't cut it all the rest of the way off of there. But another one that has birds and cabins because apparently I'm attracted to not only birds, but cabins. I didn't know that until I did my kit parade and realized that, wow, I really like cabins. And it has the Christmas tree, so very cute. I hope that my neighbor's dog barking is not coming across too loudly on my video, um, but we're just going to go with it. Every once in a while he comes out and has to burn off some energy barking, so we're, we're just going to have to go. If not, I'll pause it and come back in a bit when he's done. This one I did last summer in, no, this, yes, I did that this year, right? Was that in this, this year, 2023? Uh, never had any interest in owning any of the lighthouses. And then all of a sudden, one day I said, I need to get all the lighthouses because I think it was after I saw Beacon at Daybreak stitched and it was so beautiful. So then I went out and bought all of the, the uh, lighthouses and was going to stitch one of them this summer. And I think I laid them all out and um, let my, my uh, sons and my husband pick which one they like. And they unanimously liked this one the best. So this is the one that I stitched. And this one is called, why am I drawing a blank? Rocky Point. Okay, so they have a bigger version of the Rocky Point Lighthouse, the lighthouse at Rocky Point, and then this is the smaller version of it. Um, it's like Beacon at Rocky Point or something like that, but I know that the bigger Dimensions Gold collection might be Beacon at Rocky Point, and this might just be, I, I don't know, I'll put it, I'll put it down there. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, my first lighthouse, loved stitching this, and I think I kind of focused on this one from start to finish and got it done fairly quickly, maybe in a month or a month and a half, something like that. Beautiful, it's got lots of French knots and stuff, so there we go. All right, we are coming to the end of the Dimensions Petites, and this, so this is the last one, and this one here is... Uh, the Santa that you've all seen, and I, I can't remember what the name of it is. I still have, so like I was mentioning, when I put it in the hoop, I like to attach sometimes some thread to the end, and I didn't cut this off yet. So ignore that, and we'll just focus on the actual finish of this guy. Oh my gosh, he looks so lifelike and realistic. I mean, it's like a photograph. And you see this one stitched, it's amazing. I hope it's coming across that way on the video because in real life it just it just looks like a photograph. It's so amazing. His eyes, they like pierce through your soul. Look at that. They're so blue. That's exactly how my grandpa's eyes used to look. I remember this kind of reminds me of my grandpa if my grandpa were Santa, if he had a a beard like that, that this is what my grandpa would look like, but so cute. Now his eyes, um, I mean, I'm sorry, his glasses have a little bit of couching and there was some metallic thread used. So I don't know if you can see the sparkle on those, but they look like actual gold rimmed glasses. Adorable. I mean, these dimensions petites are hard to stitch, but boy, are they worth it in the end. Okay. I think I'm going to pause until the dog is done barking and then I will come back and go into the bigger dimensions kits. So I will be right back. All right, uh, he seems to have slowed down. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going on this because I don't wanna lose my light by my window. So we're gonna go on, moving on now to the dimensions kits that are larger. And this is not a dimensions gold. I believe this is just a regular dimensions kit. And 
It is called something like Baby Blue Jays or something like that. I'll put the name in. Uh, but this is adorable. Those little baby birds. There. Look at how cute. He just came. He just, he was, he was the one that flew out of the nest first. Or did he fall out? Either way, he's encouraging. Yes, I believe he jumped out first and he's encouraging his other little siblings to um, jump off the jump off the branch and uh, try to fly. So adorable. I just think he's so cute. And I think this one stitched. I don't. I'm pretty sure this one wasn't a Dimensions Gold because I think it stitched up pretty quick. But it is an odd size too, so that's going to be a little bit challenging finding a frame for that because it's kind of elongated. All right, this next one here has a bit of a story. It is called Winter Geese, and I finished this one, um, I don't know, a year or two ago. I don't know. Can't really remember when I finished this one, but I absolutely loved stitching this, and if you watch, if you're if you're a longtime follower of my channel and you were with me while I was stitching this, you might remember that when that this this project actually is supposed to have snowflakes falling all of the French knots. And originally, when I started doing the French knots, I d I thought they looked too small and they were get, kind of getting lost. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to take the time to do the French knots, I'm going to make them bigger. So I think I doubled up on the size of the French knots. And so they were really big snowflakes. I will try to insert a picture of what those snowflakes look like when I did them. But my husband's like, wow, those snowflakes are too big. I think you should leave them off is what his opinion was. And I said, well, they need to have the snow. I mean, that's kind of the part of it. And I thought that the, the big ones looked fine. So I put this away for a while. Well, not too long ago, I pulled this out because I think I was looking for something in my finishes. And I pulled this out and I looked at my French knots and I was like, oh, Oh my, those are big. Those do not look good. So, you know, after I had put it away for a while and then looked at it, I'm like, okay, those are just too big. And I took them all out. I snipped them all off. So <laughs> this currently has no French knots on it. And I'm going to restitch them. Now, I have since given this pattern away, so I don't know exactly where the French knots go. I'm going to have to just look at the picture that I had of when they had French knots in. And also, if you look, because my French knots were so big, you can actually see some holes poked in the Ada where the French knots were. You can do it, you can certainly see that there, but not maybe here. So I'm just going to have to do the best I can looking at my finished photos that I took of this to see roughly where I had placed the French knots. And I'm going to do them smaller, just like the kid originally asked for. And I will someday put the snow back in because I think it really adds something to it to have the snow. I mean, my husband thinks it looks fine without, and it does if I never put him in, it does look fine. But there's something about it, just this scene and it being actively snowing that just really makes the project. So this is called Winter Geese and it is out of print, but I think it might be back in print again overseas. And so, um, yeah, you can you can find it if you look for it. Okay, but such such a wonderful scene. Okay, this is a really old Dimensions gold collection that I finished, and this is the one that I said was also got skewed the way I stitched it, and I think I had it. You can see these pin marks here because I think I was trying to stretch it kind of back into, you know, a, a, a more rectangular formation. I think it was quite a bit more skewed than this, but yes, I've learned my lessons since then, and I, I know that... Uh, you have to be real careful with the way you do your French knots on this. But this one is called Butterfly Forest, I believe. And it's got some a really thin line of gold cording kind of around the edge that really makes it. I don't know if that's showing up much in, in the video or not. But this was just so much fun to stitch. Each butterfly was like a little mini finish. Lots of back stitching. This one was was um, intense, but I feel like I did it in a pretty reasonable amount of time, so not too intense. You know, always these flowers can get a little bit um, difficult to do when you're back stitching them, you know, because they, well, when you're stitching them, they just look like kind of a, a mess of color, and then when you back stitch them, it all kind of comes to life, so yeah, really wonderful. But, so there we go, Butterfly Forest. 
this may still be available. Uh, if not, I'm, you know, look for it on eBay. You'll be able to find it. There's another butterfly one too that I don't have that's similar. Okay, then we've got Feasting Frenzy right here. This was one that took me years and years to finish because I sort of got stuck on a part. And so I think I started this and then didn't pick it up for a really long time because I was really having a hard time when I tried to backstitch these diagonal lines in the, in the roof right here. And I couldn't figure out how to get them to lay right. And I got so caught up in that that I just didn't want to work on this. Because you know how sometimes you're just so focused on one part that you don't really see it for the whole picture. And I thought, oh, the whole thing was going to look terrible if I didn't get that backstitching done. What I ended up doing, which I do recommend if you do a lot of backs, um, a lot of dimensions kits, a lot of times, sometimes these these longer areas of backstitch so that when you backstitch them they don't look choppy is a lot of times you can do some couching. I'm not going to go into how to do that now but if you research how to couch a lot of times these dimensions kits the backstitching looks better when you couch them versus doing just the the actual backstitching. So once I figured out that out and got past that part I went ahead and did it but um, this was surprisingly as colorful it is and how each bird is a mini finish it did take me quite a while to finish this and I don't really know why and then look at all that backstitching on that little net right there but so worth it this one I think is still uh, widely available as well and um, it's just so colorful and looks so beautiful when it's done so I highly recommend if you haven't gotten this one and you like birds this is definitely a must stitch and I really need to get these framed and we are down to the very last finish of mine and this was one that I finished not this past summer but I don't think was it this summer I don't think it was was this 2023 or 2022 I don't know drawing a blank this one has a little bit of a warp to it this one is called Eagle's Majesty and this was the one that took me the longest to do I started this back I think in 2011 and I didn't finish it until I don't know if it was 2022 or 2023 I'll put that there I know it's you know how it is I, I feel like it was just this last July that I finished it but I don't think it was I, I think I did this in 2022 um, it doesn't matter the fact is it took me a long time like 10 11 12 years I don't know this was a whip for a really long time and I don't know why um, because it's beautiful and if you look there's actually I don't know if it'll show up in here um, but there is some sparkle um, blending filament in the water and there's some French knots here so this one really has a pretty sparkle when you see it in real life and I just don't think it's capturing it on film but I have um, a video if you watch my floss tubes I think that there's one floss tube where I really go in and show you close-ups of this finish because I was so happy to have it done after 10 or 11 years it was definitely my oldest whip so yep very happy to have it done and I have quite a few eagle kits in my collection if you uh, remember from just watching my kit parade I have quite a few eagles the back stitching of his wing was really tedious I remember but I think it was because I saved I, this was before I was doing the back stitching as I go along and I think that I saved it for the end where I think if I were to do it, it it would go a little bit smoother if I actually back stitch it as I go along so but yes there we go okay so those are all of my dimensions finishes as of December the end of December 2023 now we're going to go into the whips because I think it's only appropriate that we you should that, you know to get like I said the full spectrum of my dimensions collection I'm going to show you my whips right now so yeah this one has a bit of a warp to it too I think I was trying to straighten it and yeah I gotta be plus you know when you have something you know that's that old your your stitching style kind of gets better I'm, I was much of an, a newer stitcher up here than I was when I finished it down here <laughs> okay I will put you on pause and be back shortly with the whip parade and if you're new to that acronym, that means works in progress.
Well, right after I finished filming my video, I realized that there was a finish that I forgot to post because it was in a different area from all my other finishes. So I do have one more finish to show you. And this is Dimensions, regular Dimensions, not a Dimensions Gold, and it is called Sing in the Wash Line Blues. And I finished it, I know for a fact I finished it just this last summer in 2023. I don't know about you, but it's funny, just when I was so confused about when I was doing all those finishes, it seems like ever since quarantine and the pandemic, the, you know, that year was slow. 2020 was slow, but 2021, 22, and 23 just flew by in a blink of an eye, and it kind of feels like those three years are only one year long. So everything just seems like it happened just last year, when really it was probably three years ago. Okay, but here it is, singing the wash line blues, all finished and adorable. I loved stitching this one. It was um, really, really fun. Okay. Now back to the video. All right, going into the next part, I had to fuel up again to get going with this. Uh, I want to mention a little bit first before I go into my whip parade that uh, this, these are not all my whips. Uh, these are just my dimensions whips. So if you want to see all my whips, I made a video maybe two years ago, a couple years ago, that has all of my whips. And that is still a current video because I think those are all still my current whips with the exception of Eagle's Majesty, which is the Dimensions kit that was a whip in that video and is now finished. So if you want to see all my whips, uh, you know, I shouldn't say that that's maybe current because I may, I may have added a few to those, but it's not really worth it to do a whole whip parade right now because like I said, most of those uh, in that video are still my whips. And that also goes with the, I did show all these dimensions in that video as well. Um, so, it's kind of a little bit repetitive showing these whips, but like I said, to keep it all in one video and to keep it more recent, this is uh, going to be my whips. And I feel like I have, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them, something like that. But I also wanted to say too, and I'm doing this more for myself and my own journaling purposes, that I have dedicated, I, have, I am committed to making 2024 the year that I work on all of my Dimensions whips. I'm not gonna give any kind of promise as to how I'm going to do it because I just am going to just sort of determine that as I go. But this is going to kind of help me see and plan for 2024 as to what I want to work on. Um, because yeah, I'm not quite sure how to tackle. Some of these will not be able to get done, but some of them are kind of close to getting done. So I may pick one up like say in January and you know, I don't, I don't want to commit to saying I'm going to work on one each month because what happens is if I work on one a month and then I decide that I'm really still enjoying it and could maybe work on it a second month and get it done, then I might do that. So I can't promise I'm going to touch every one of these in 2024, but I'm going to really make an effort to get, you know, a, a good amount of stitches in each one of these and push them forward toward a finish. So yeah, I'm excited to see, maybe we'll do a video at the end of 2024 and see how many of these projects that I show you right now actually get uh, not only done, but maybe just lots more progress done on them. Okay, so because these are all in bags and rolled up, they're going to be wrinkled. There's going to be, uh, they're all in different states of um, how I ended up leaving them. But all right, I'm going to take a big gulp of coffee and then we're going to go ahead and get started in no particular order. I don't remember out of these which one's my oldest, but I do have a feeling that I know which ones are old. <laughs> Let's just say ones that have been in my collection for a while. Okay, and the first one is going to be, I'm going to hopefully not take, you know, I, I hope there's not going to be enough of a glare that I don't have to take each one of these out of their bags. They're, they're pro the, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could, but it, it seems like that's just going to take longer, but I guess I could show you that. We'll see how it goes along. So this is a Dimensions Gold Petite called Bird Post. Okay, and I do know that this is quite an old one in my collection, and it is one of those top ones that I am going to try to focus on getting finished in 2024 because it's small, and 
you know, what would you say? Would you say I'm half done with that maybe, potentially? So this is, def this is a definite one that I'm going to work on in 2024 and I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to, like I said, no particular order as to when I'm going to pick them up, but this will be one because I like to usually work on projects in, you know, the season that they are. This is probably going to be one that I pick up in spring. Okay. So bird post all rolled up. Okay. Let's, I'm going to make somewhat of an attempt to get them put back in their right bag. Okay, yeah, so these I'll have in project bags that I made. They're getting kind of worn because they've they, been, yeah, I won't show you each of my bags. I do show that. I, if you want to see all of them and all their bags, I show that in my other Dimensions Whip Parade. Okay, this next one here is called Sweetheart's Gate, and I'm going to show you that without taking it out of the bag because it's actually kind of tucked in there nicely there, but Sweetheart's Gate. There. And let's see where I am on that. Oops. I know. You will see that I don't always serge the edges of my fabric. Sometimes I don't do it at the beginning, and then when the threads get really annoying to me, then sometimes halfway through the project I'll go back and serge the edges. But not much done on this. A little bit of the birdhouse. And this isn't even a Dimensions Gold kit, so... I know if I just dedicate some time on this, I mean, I would love in 2024 to get this to the halfway mark. And it might be one of those where I start working on and feel like I want to just work on it all the way through the finish because it has a companion piece called Garden Gate, I believe it is, that looks just like this. So if I can get this one done, then maybe I can start that the companion to that. All right, so there we go. Yes, these strings. I can tell this one's really got some strings hanging. And I will have to do some surging of that before I pick that back up again. All right, this one here is called Orchids and Hummingbird. Now, if you remember from my kit collection, I have lots of hummingbird kits. And this is yet just another one. Orchids and Hummingbird, and it the number of this kit, because it's old and out of print, is 35237, if you could see right there. And I started this a long time ago, so long ago. Yeah, you know what, this might be my oldest one, because look at it's still got the masking tape on it that I don't use anymore and have not used masking tape for years to edge my pieces. So, because this one has tape on it, this it's either this one or Bird Post, I think, are my definite... I should have ironed these for you, but we'll do this. I'll fold them a little bit like that just to, to make them so that I can kind of stretch it out a little bit and show you how beautiful that is there. A lot of times I don't like to iron these when they're midway like that because I don't like to iron them until I finish them because I feel like they get kind of the oils from my hands and stuff and there might be some dirt and I'm afraid that if I iron them, before I wash it that I'm just going to kind of set that stain in there. So, you know, I, I, I don't usually iron my whips. But you can see, I mean, the wrinkles are not taking away from the beauty of that project. The colors are amazing, so soft. And where would you say I am with that? Would you say that I'm halfway? Maybe? I mean, I did the denser half. So, yeah, I mean, I could get that done. I could get this done in 2024. So, all right, let me roll it the other way this time and maybe get some of those wrinkles out of there. Plus, and I'll just cut that masking tape off, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, now we're getting to one that is not a Dimensions goal, just a regular Dimensions called Sunlit Fox. There, I believe this one is still readily available. I don't think it's out of print yet. And because it's not a Dimensions Gold, I should, oh, as a matter of fact, I know I can get this one done because, if I remember correctly, I am so close to being done on this. Okay, so look at that. 
straighten it out for you a little bit there. So all I have left to do on this one, let me scoot it over. Without glaring, I mean, I have just this little bit of the fox right here, his tail, like right there. I mean, I think I'm done. I thought I had the leaves to do, and I haven't wanted to pick this up because I didn't really feel like working on those leaves, but I think I got the leaves all done, and all I have left to do is the rest of the fox. Okay, this is a definite must finish in 2024. Look at that eye. Oh my gosh. Dimensions just knows how to knock the eyes out of the park, don't you think? So realistic and beautiful. Okay, Sunlit Fox is definitely going to be being done. So yeah, it's great for me to see these because I kind of forgot the state that a lot of them were in. So it's kind of nice to see this. So I can kind of determine which ones, because maybe I'll be motivated if I start the year with some that I can get finished. You know, it'll motivate me to work on some of the other ones later on that are the bigger kits that I won't get a finish but could get a lot done on. Okay, this next one is called Honey Bear. Right there. I know I can't show you straight, straight on because it'll just be too glary, but this is not a Dimensions Gold, just a regular Dimensions, and I feel like this one may have been reprinted at some point because for a while, it was when I got it, it was really hard to find, and then it became, you know, sort of uh, more widely available. So here is where I am at on this one right here. So probably not quite half done, but close. Unless, because let's see, I have the bottom half to do. Um, so we're about, yeah, I, I would say, because this is about the, maybe this is maybe the three quarters mark. So I don't know. I guess you can say because that's about three quarters that I'm maybe about half done with this. But it doesn't really matter. I just need to. This is a potential could finish because it's not a Dimensions Gold, so they go kind of fast, but this is adorable. I love the, I've always just been in love with the lighting on this one. Yeah, very cute. Okay. Yeah. We haven't gotten to the big Dimensions Gold yet, so I maybe if I could work on just getting maybe some of the non-Dimensions Gold kits done, get those completely done and then that way all I'll have to do is then put some progress into the bigger the bigger ones. Okay, here is another Dimensions uh, non-gold, just a regular Dimensions kit and this one is called Sunflower Snowman. I just remember when I start these, I just am so in love with them when I start them and I'm just like, I am going to stitch this and I'm going to get it all done. I don't know why, sometimes I just, you know, lose interest and need to move on to something else, but I have got to get this one done. This is on 14 count, and I think I remembered when I started it that I didn't think the coverage was good because the, the this is a really old kit, and the thread was really thin, um, but, oh yeah, it looks like this one has some tape on it too, so definitely an older one, and here is what I have done on it. Let's just fold it this way so we can kind of see. Trying to hold it up there. So yeah, not too much done on this one. So I've got to make some progress. Maybe I can shoot for getting maybe to the halfway point on this one. I mean, I need to at least start getting into, you know, the snowman here, you know, but very adorable. I do believe it is out of print. Oh, wait. Another Dimensions non-gold is... Let me get this little piece of paper out of the way here. That was my little... This one is called Polar Bear and Cubs. Let 
it is on a navy blue Ada, and a lot of the, the darkest parts are not stitched. It's kind of fun unveiling these for myself, too, because I haven't uh, had them out since that last wood parade. Like I said, they're, they have not moved. <laughs> All right, here is my non-ironed piece and I've got a bit of the polar bear, mama polar bear done and that's it on that one. Yeah, I thought I had had more of sort of the background uh, northern lights stitched but it looks like I'm barely just getting started on those and so there's there's a lot of that sort of kind of half cross stitches up there in the sky. So that one does need some work. Right. I think we have maybe one more non-dimensions gold to show you, and then we're going to be going into the dimensions golds. No, I'm wrong. I've got three more non-golds. Okay, this one here is called Goldfinch Gathering. And I am remembering from my whip parade that I got to start on this, but I don't rec I don't have any recollection of actually starting this. So I think it was one of those that I might have done for a Stitch Mania or something like that, where it was kind of like, you know, start this and then the next day start something else, because I don't even remember starting this. And I can tell by very, I know that I have very little done on this. Yeah, like almost not even worth showing. Okay, okay, there is my pitiful start. I don't even know which way is up, which which is right side up <laughs> on this one. That's going to take some doing. So I 100% want to work on this in 2024 and at least get this to a recognizable status point. Because it is just a shame that all I have done was one tiny little start on this one and it is gorgeous. Goldfinch Gathering, do believe it's out of print and yes, I'm going to. It's definitely going to be one of my spring projects so that I can get, you know, I mean, I at least, I at least need to get a bird stitched on it or something. I mean, that's just pitiful. Okay. This is one called Winter Bird Houses. And when I I had this one, uh, I remember my husband surprising me with this one on an eBay auction. And I cannot believe that I don't have this one stitched yet. I saw somebody a long time ago had stitched this and it's absolutely gorgeous when it's all finished up. And there's just no excuses as to why I haven't done it yet. Okay, hold on. Man, this one is really mushed up in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, one of these days, I'll have these all nice and ironed. And I guess there's not even any point in... So, this is how far I have gotten on this one. But you can tell that it just pops off that fabric. I mean, it is just going to look so gorgeous when it's done. I just am super excited about working on that one. Yeah, I mean, when you haven't worked on these in a while, they are kind of like new starts again, you know, getting them going. And yes, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very excited about that. All right, and we have one more non-dimensions gold kit to show you. Let me put this back in here. Okay, and this one is called Ice Cardinal. And I started this as a memorial piece for my stepdad when he passed away. And so it's it's one that definitely needs to get done. And I think I had maybe toyed with the idea of cropping it a little so that as to not have to do all those branches but 
I have started stitching some of the branches and they're not that bad. So I, I was thinking they were going to be kind of tedious. And so I think I'm going to just leave it as is and not crop it. And all right, and here is where I'm at on it. And that cardinal just pops on that black fabric. So let me straighten him out a little bit here. Do a little bit of hand pressing so that you can see him a little bit better in all of his glory. So I guess I haven't done a lot of the branches yet, but enough to know that they're not too bad. But I just love so I'm almost done with the cardinal. So then that's that's kind of what's gonna all be left is just doing a lot of that branches. A lot of the branches, but I could do it. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay, now we're going to get into the Dimensions Gold Collection. Let me put this guy back in its bag. I'm going to need to sort of maybe after this video straighten these out a little bit like that so they're not so uh, haphazardly shoved into the bag. Okay, this one here is probably my oldest one. This is called Balloon Glow. Very, very popular one, stitched by many people. And I started this a long time ago with my friend Kim. If you're out there, Kim, still watching, I'm so sorry I've abandoned this project. I need to reach out to you and see if you're still working on yours. You're probably done by now. But I have got to... I decided I don't do stitch alongs anymore. I do start alongs, which is definitely applies to me more than a stitch along. Okay, look at how much I've gotten done on this. And it's beautiful. This is just such a gorgeous piece and so colorful. And I believe my friend Kim, when she started, she started on the other part. So she has stitched, kind of was going this way. And so she stitched more of the cabin. What's in it, if you can see right there, that she had gotten that done and was more working on that half and I was working on this half, which this half that I have left to do looks like it's a little bit more interesting, a little more colorful, maybe more tedious, but gorgeous. Okay. We don't need to look at my backs on there because, well, I don't know, that doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. I mean, I don't really take time with my backs. So I'm, I'm one of those that to feel like the back is something that it just isn't seen and I don't usually care to make it look. I don't, I don't take too much care into making it look nice. All right, and then I think this one, which why does it feel like this one is still on a Q-snap? Okay, this is the finery of nature that I started... Um, what year? So not last year, but you know, probably 2022. So it's got this gold, all of this gold. That's that's kind of scary. All that gold filament that I think is, you have to do the couching on that all around the edges. And I think that part kind of terrifies me. So I think I mentally have a block toward working on this one, but apparently I thought I was gonna get back to it because I just shoved the whole Q-snap in here which I don't like to do. I don't like to leave my projects on. Okay, so very tiny start on that. And just up in the corner. So I need to work on that again and try not to worry about all that gold couching that I'm gonna have to do at the end. So, okay, I need to take that off the Q-snap before I put that away permanently here. Well, not permanently, but semi-permanently. All right, we're getting down to the last three, I believe. We've got this one right here called Mare and Foal, one that I paid dearly for <laughs> when I had it. There was a seller on eBay that was, it. this came from Russia before the war, before there were sanctions, and I ordered it from Russia. And it's probably the most I've ever paid for a kit, but still under $100, so not too bad. Um, yep. 
very, very pretty, and I could not wait to start it. I believe I started that in 2022, could have been 2021, I don't know, the years are all blending together. And I became quickly discouraged with the black. Uh, it was my, it was hurting my hands so much trying to stitch the black through. So I do believe on this one that I went from stitching either five or six strands, whatever it called for, to like doing four strands or something like that. So it's uh, it actually the coverage looks better in real life than it does in on in, in case the in in case the coverage doesn't look that good on video it does look much better in real life I mean it you can't see really any gaps at all so uh, I was glad, kind of glad to have that black area done but I've got quite a bit done on this I'm saving the I'm saving the horses for last I'm going to try to do everything else and do the horses last but very pretty there was a bit of a line. I had had this one on the cue snap a little longer than I should when I put it away because I think it was kind of sitting next to me and I was going to work on it, but I feel like over time, can you kind of see that little line right there? I mean, that's just a huge faux pas on my part. I should know better not to put something away for, I think this was like put away for a whole year and I think it still had the the cue snap on it. And so, but I think after a while when I wash it, those will, uh, sort of relax a little bit but yeah there was just a little bit of line a little bit of a line there don't know if it'll show up on the camera or not it if it does it's not very noticeable in real life and I think yeah like I said after I wash that and um, iron it that that hopefully will go away but yeah not a good idea to leave something in a hoop uh, for a long period of time when you're not going to stitch it two more to go show you this one because okay this this is something that well by the time you're seeing this video you will already have seen my progress on this because uh, like I said I'm recording this in on December of December 22nd but you're not going to see this till December 31st and probably around that time I'll have my my uh, floss tube video showing you this progress but this was one that I started in January of 2023 and I was going to have the whole thing done I guess I'll turn it this way so you can see it I was going to have the whole thing done by the end of this year and I didn't quite get that way and get that done but I did make a lot of progress on that this this year and I did half the progress earlier in the year and then I went ahead and finished up the fall portion just this month so like I said depending on when you're seeing my floss tube video you may or may not have seen this progress but regardless at the end of December, this is where it ended up and I'm gonna put it away until next year. And so then all I have left to do will be this winter section down on the bottom there. So almost got it done in a year. So we just got this part right down there to do, uh, yeah, right there. And maybe I'll pick that up next year, next, uh, next December. But here it is, beautiful. And I've been back stitching as I go along, so. You know, it's never good to save that for the end. It's, I think it's a, a lot more difficult. And if you are one that does save the back stitching to the end or haven't um, known that maybe it's a better idea to not do it, I would say that the reason why, because it's, you know, if you like back stitching, I guess maybe it's okay to finish the whole thing and then go back and back stitch it. But the reason why I like to backstitch as I go, and I was just thinking about that as I was working on this section here, is because when you freshly have stitched an area, you those symbols are kind of um, the symbols that you used for the different colors are kind of fresh in your memory. So then when you go to backstitch them, when you when you look at the chart and you see a symbol, you understand more where the backstitching goes because you've just recently stitched those symbols. So it's like, you know, I, I think that's probably probably not getting my point across as much as I know what I do but it's hard to explain what I do but I just noticed that backstitching when the symbols are fresh and you've just freshly stitched them 
it's just easier when you're doing the backstitching on these particular, particularly on Dimensions kits, to backstitch right away while those symbols are fresh. Because if I had to, you know, a year later go back and like stitch the backstitch this area, it would be really confusing to me to remember all those different colors of purple and where they are and where to come up and go down at, if that makes any sense at all. So, anyway. Just highly recommend backstitching as you go if you work on Dimensions kits because you will thank yourself later, trust me. All right, we have only one more to show. And that one is one that's been a whip for a few years. Maybe 2019 is when I started it. This is called Winter Cabin. And yes, I believe I might have worked on this at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And the... Uh, Another thing that you'll see whether, okay, once again, this, the progress on this one that I'm about to show you is not going to be truly where the progress ends at the end of December because I currently have this on my floor stand right now and I'm working on it. So since my last whip parade, uh, I have, so in, I, I decided to pick this up this just this month in December and start working on it again. So since my last whip parade, which was filmed a couple years ago, I did finish doing the roof here and am currently building the cabin, building the logs on the cabin right now. So, I mean, this was just fresh. I was actually working on it this morning on the 22nd of December. So when you see this on New Year's Eve, I'm hoping to have quite a bit more done because I would love to be at the halfway point at the end of December. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna be farther than I am now. So, as of today, right now, in the filming of this on December 22nd, it is, this is the progress on it. Oh, I guess, you know what? I'm not gonna take it out of this this little hoop, um, this nerd hoop, because it is exactly where it wants, where I want it to be right now. And as you can see, I have it like ready to put into my floor span, and it's just gonna be way too much work to take it out. But you can see that um, I've gotten a lot done with this so far, and it is uh, the halfway point on this, I believe, is is actually like right there. So I could, I could potentially get that done. I hope that you enjoyed this, that you will continue to visit with me through 2024 as I work on these to get some of them done. All right, I will see you next year in 2024. Bye for now.